Okay, so we will uh, get started with our uh, first lecture here. So what I am going to do is uh, get started with the introduction to probability, but uh, in this statistics, I am expecting you people already know a little bit of probability. So I will just quickly go through and uh, those of you are especially MTech IUR students will be also doing IE621, there you will see this uh, more. But uh, still I want to go through for the sake of other students in the class. Okay. Okay. Now uh, as you all can imagine, there is uh, nothing deterministic in life, right? Majority of the things are like random, there is certain uncertainty associated with this. Okay, like uh, uh, even they say that tomorrow sun will arise or not, that is going to be not so sure guaranteed. There is certain, maybe small, very, very small, but there is a possibility that it may not happen. Okay. So, there is randomness in uh, many real world problems we believe and but we want to understand them, right. So, that uh, if you have to deal with those problems, we need to understand. And that is why we need to take into account uh, their randomness. Okay. And now, how we are going to do this? If you have to deal with this real world problems, which you know they are going to have certain uncertainty or randomness associated with this, then what we are going to do is in that case, if you want to analyze them, we are going to allow or build models which themselves are probabilistic. As we go along in this uh, course, you will see that what is that probabilistic things that we are going to use in modeling real world problems. And also, whatever the real world problems that we are going to see, we actually do not know what is the probabilistic behavior or the probability model they are going to use. But what we get to know is their behavior, property or nature through the data that they generate, right. So, for example, we know the weather, right, weather, we cannot predict weather, it is difficult, it is a random quantity, like I do not know whether next year it is going to rain heavily in Mumbai or not, or it is going to be, uh, the monsoon will going to be good, bad, or it is going to be normal there is a certain kinds of uh, underlying randomness there. I do not know according to which, what probability that is, that is going to happen. But anyway, next year, I will see whether it was a normal monsoon by the like by the end of when the monsoon season ends, I know that it was a normal or deficit or it was, uh, I mean over, like it was uh, more than normal. So, that is the data I observed. And that data is like okay, what is generated from that underlying real world problem. Okay. Now, what we are trying to do is we get to observe this data and observing this data is what we are trying to go and build the underlying model. Maybe like whether as a real world phenomena is happening according to some probabilistic model. I do not know that model behavior, the only way I see it is through the data generated. Okay. So, I try to see the data and go back and try to see that or uh, build model that can potentially better explain that uh, real world problem. And, uh, and why probability models? I mean, we really do not know like uh, what is the model that is being used to decide all the weather conditions. But we know that there is some kind of randomness involved in that and that is why to at least understand that systematically, we want to have to start using some model and because of this randomness, we start thinking about some probability models here. Okay, And uh, what we need to ensure is, if we have able to suppose let us say there is an underlying model according to which the weather phenomena happens. And suppose you know that weather phenomena, somehow you are able to model it well, then how you are going to be sure about whether the weather model you have captured is going to be good or bad? 
you are going to see whether it is good or bad based on the data that you are going to observe and see that that data being generated is consistent with your model. Okay. So, let us say that uh, weather again weather is a very classic example weather. Let us say our meteorological department build a model they build a model collecting our data what happened in the last 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, 50 years whatever. And now they build a model and then they make a prediction for the next year. They may say that okay, maybe monsoon is going to be normal and then next year you actually see whether the monsoon is normal or not. If monsoon happens to be normal, then maybe the underlying probability model you have built is actually is close to what the nature is trying to do and you are good. So, you have tried to understand that probabilistic model. If not, then maybe something like you have your model is not at good, your probability model is not good, you maybe need to improve that. And that is what happens like uh, the weather prediction algorithm exactly does that like they make a predictions and if uh, things are as per them, fine. If not, they will go back, take the data and try to improve the model. Okay. So, that is where it is the whole thing like you see that there is probability model and the data here. We need to have probability models which tries to govern, try to understand, model the real world phenomena and data is what we observe and see that whether the data that is being generated is consistent with our probability model. If, if it is so, then we know that we have modeled the real world phenomena well. Okay, and if we model the real world phenomena well, that is good for us, right? Like we can predict the things properly and accordingly we can uh, take our actions. Okay. Okay, now let us start building the basics of probability. Maybe some of these things are already being parallelly done in IE 6 to 1, but I will uh, go through this uh, quickly today. Okay, so what we will start talk in this class is about a simple sample space, events, X, so probability, conditional probability, independent events and Bayesian formula like let us target to finish this today. Okay, these are all classics which everybody when the who knows already basic probability they already know this. So, if you are going to consider any experiment, so now. And now we are we are talking about random experiments, right? Like uh, just to think of uh, like let's think of weather itself. Like weather is like an experiment. Like you want to see what is going to happen tomorrow. That means whatever the underlying conditions that are going to make something to happen, uh, maybe like uh, make the weather behave in certain pattern. So, these are all like we are just going to treat it as experiments, random experiments. Okay, The outcome what we are going to see they are coming through this random experience. Now, to understand that we will not go into anything complex like weather. We do not know weather there are a lot of things in weather right like there is a temperature, humidity and what else uh, maybe perception that uh, density lot of things are involved that all are going to govern how the weather behaves. But to begin with, we will not get into that complexity, we will strip down the things to the bare minimum possible. So, what is the bare minimum possible? We will go to the case of simple coin toss or a throw of a die to understand all these things. Okay, these are still random quantities, but they are pretty simple to understand and uh, reason. Okay. So, we know about coin toss. Is coin toss is a, a random experiment or it is a deterministic experiment? It is going to be random experiment because you cannot apparently predict what is the thing you are going to see whether it is a heads or tails. So, now the first thing we are going to look into is sample space. We are going to say possible outcome of an experiment 
as a sample space and we denote it by omega okay and the next thing of interest for us is something called event and we are going to treat any subset of the sample space is known as event okay if you want to understand a set up a random experiment or understand or analyze that random experiment first thing you need to do is have some understanding about what are these possible outcomes and what are these possible events okay now let's look into that so in case of coin flipping we know that outcome is going to be either head or tail right so that's why the sample space is simply going to be head or tail h represents head t represents tail and in terms of rolling of a dice the dice will have six faces right and any one of them come i don't know which one and that is why they are represented 1 2 3 4 5 6 and other simple examples is like instead of one coin you may want to flip two coins and in that case there are four possibilities right either both of them may show head both of them may show tail or each of them show different things the so first one show head second one tail or vice versa and similarly if you are going to take two dice there are now 36 possibilities right and that 36 possibilities is written in this matrix and that will constitute your omega and now your outcome or a sample space can be actually need not be as simple as that it could be actually continuous space or interval okay for example if you are interested in room temperature and that room temperature the possible range of that temperature could be anywhere between some value a and b for example if you are interested in room temperature in mumbai it could be something anywhere between 20 to 45 degrees okay so then in that case you are going to say my outcome sample space is the interval a b and any value in the interval a b can happen okay now events right we, we wanted to talk about events now we said that event is nothing but subset of sample space so if you are if you take the coin toss subsets are h t are both h t and in fact null set can also be there okay now what does e event he that h means that means like you are interested in the event heads and t means you are interested in the tail and h t means you are interested in either of them like i mean whatever comes fine that basically and uh, what is phi here nothing happening nothing happening but when you are going to toss a coin can nothing happen no right either head tail happens or if you are interested in both either is fine but nothing but it, you, phi null set still a uh, trivial event we can consider okay and uh, in the rolling of a dice you may be interested in knowing an event in which the outcome is divisible by 2 or even number in that case your event is uh, 2 4 6 or you may be interested in an event where your outcome is odd number in which you will be interested in 1 3 5 or you may be interested in an event where your outcome is divisible by 3 in which case your event is going to be 3 6 like that and now if I have omega as my sample space how many events will be there to the power and does this include your null set okay so it will be total to the power cardinality of omega will be your 
thing but this is makes sense when your omega is finite okay that is uh, you are interested our possible outcomes are finite like in, if not this could be just infinity okay but that is fine any event which is a subset of my outcome i'm going to treat it as an event okay in in terms of uh, flipping of coins like uh, can somebody tell what does this event represents yeah here it is yeah here it is saying that i'm interested in the case where the first outcome is head so in that case second one comes either head or tail i don't care and similarly this event is representing that my first outcome should be tail okay in the roll of dice again you may be interested in an event where the sum of the two faces is going to be phi so in that case these are all the possible outcomes will be interested in and similarly when it is uh, uh, sum is 6 you can consider all these possible outcomes as your events now in a case of the temperature we said that let's say ab was your interval your possible outcome this was our omega and uh, event can be any subset of this let's say like let's say if my uh, this is my a and this is my b room temperature and i'll take some interval here between this c and d and then in that case uh, this is a subset and that could be an event so instead of asking if your possible room temperature is between 20 to 45 you want to see that oh will, will it be cold in my room like uh, that in that case suppose let's say will the temperature will be between 20 to 24 and you will be interested in that particular subset now okay now given that we have this sample space and events you may want to do certain operations on events for example um, like uh, what is the what is the chance that like uh, if you are throwing a dice that my outcome is uh, even and also it is uh, um, divisible by 3 now you are trying to play with you are interested in two events now like one event is it is an even and another is divisible by three any one of them happens you are fine and now you want to like now how to do now you are trying to look into multiple events and you are trying to do operations on that so what operations are possible so let's take two events which are in which are events in omega so obviously we are this and uh, f is also a subset of this now let's try to understand when we say event e occurs okay so we know that let's take i i know e is a subset of omega now i'm talking about event e happened what does that mean So what it means is let's say okay so before that let's say whenever any element in E is the outcome then I am going to say event E has happened. So what does that mean? Suppose let's say you are uh, rolling a dice and you are interested in the event 146 the face showing 146 then we are going to say that event e has happened if either face shows 1 or 4 or 6 so only if the face shows something like a 2 3 or 5 then i will say that event e has not occurred otherwise we i will just say that event e has happened okay now if i have to I'm asking if event E has happened, then I may be also interested in some events not happening. Okay, like I may want like okay, my room temperature is not between 40 to 45. Okay, so 
then what is that complement the complement is like of an event e is nothing but you remove e from your omega and uh, whatever remains is your complement for example if you have this let's say this is your omega and you have some set e here and now all the things that are outside they are going to form e complement now this naturally brings out couple of properties on an event and its complement so if you are going to take union of e and e complement that has to be naturally omega right that is uh, by definition and if you are going to take intersection of e and uh, E complement that is a null set because there is nothing common between them ok. But let us this is a simple case when we looked into E and E complement their union and intersection that is clear because we know what happens. But now let us take uh, two things two sets and try to define their union and intersection let us say I have one set E here and uh, another set f here this is omega now what is their union the union is simply nothing but all the elements in this so which is all of this and uh, intersection similarly we are going to define to be simply all the elements which are common in that and now let us say G is intersection of E and F two events ok. Now what like G is a new event I have defined using event E and F right. Now when I am going to say event G happened. So, it should that means both E and, and F happened that means the element which is common in both E and F if that has come as an outcome then I am going to say that event G has happened that means basically the outcome should be from the intersection if this has happened then I am going to say that event G has happened ok next mutually exclusive. If there is nothing common in between these two elements ok let us take let us take two events E and F and now what we are saying is if you take their intersection if it is null that means there is nothing common in between them like in this case right E and F there is nothing common in between them and in this case we are going to say that mutually exclusive events ok. And now so this is a simple case of two events we have considered but the same definition of union intersections applies even we have countably many uh, events for example let us say e1 e2 all the way up to infinity then their union means that means this is if an element belongs to any of the event it is there in this union and similarly an element belongs to the intersection if and only if it is belongs to each of these events ok. And uh, even though I have written it for this uh, countably many events here, this applies even if it is a finite, I mean this is a def standard definition. So all of you understand difference between uh, finite and countable here, anybody who do not understand it, ok fine. So now let us get into probability. 
So, you people are already uh, in the IE621, you taught about sigma algebra? Okay. So, you will learn it, but I am not going to go into that. So, but in the, any of you aware of what is sigma algebra? Probability space, what is probability space? Just tell me, okay, let me, let me just make it simpler for you. I just want to know, do you know sigma algebra? Yeah. Okay, one, let's just think, like we talk about events, right? We said events which are nothing but subsets of your omega. Now let's collect all subsets of omega. Okay, we know that all subset omega, there are total 2 to the power cardinality of omega. Okay, that size. And now, so there is a formal definition of sigma algebra. I mean, uh, in this, we will not go into that. You will anyway learn it in the other course. And that is also not of so importance for us. What we want to do is for every, any subset, we would like to know the likelihood of that subset happening. Okay, let me ask this question like, okay, if you have a simple dice, you are throwing it. What is the likelihood that the outcome is divisible by 2? One by two. Okay, what is the likelihood that that value is uh, divisible by? Th uh, sorry, uh, it is divisible by three. One by three, right? Now, why you are saying that? It is based on the likelihood, right? Because I mean, everybody right now you are also assuming that it's a fair dice. So each one of them showing up has the same likelihood okay like uh, and now I am uh, interested in a particular like when I say divisible by 3 out of 6 possibilities we are interested in 2 possibilities right 3 and 6. So 2 by 6 is uh, how you are computing it. Now instead of going that see pro in probability we have to uh, like uh, define these things formally. Now, what we are now going to do is probability, you are now going to assign probability to each of the possible outcome, uh, each of the events. Okay. So, ultimately when you are going to do, in, do an experiment, you will be interested in different events happening and you would like to know their probabilities or their likelihood or at least you want to model it, you want to assign some probabilities or likelihood to them and that is where the probability comes into picture. Okay, so probability is nothing but like uh, I mean the sigma algebra is denoted by f script here, which is a subset of all set. Right? So this is now going to be a function from this sub subset of all sample space to zero one. Okay, and now this the way we want to assign probabilities, we want to make sure that they satisfy certain basic properties. And what properties they should satisfy? We are going to make some assumptions on that and that will make us be, uh, make some axioms. Okay. The first property we are going to assume that probability of any event is going to be non-negative. Okay. So, we want to when we de want to deal with probability which when we are also going to talk about likelihood, right? We want some non-negative numbers there. Like uh, making, saying that the likelihood of so happening something is uh, minus 0 0.05 is not so intuitive, right? Like uh, you want to assign some non-zero numbers and that is why we want everything to be positive. And also, when I consider the whole sample space itself, I want that to be assigned some number and that number should be the largest. 
right like for example like uh, when you are saying uh, when you are saying uh, let's say uh, dice if i tell any number is fine to me the likelihood of that should be larger than any other possible event right so i'm saying that let's say you you are taking omega equals to 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 so this is your dice which is uh, this sample space now let's take two events e1 and e2 e1 is let's say 1 3 5 that is a odd number and e2 is 2 4 6 and now omega is also one more event which is like entire thing whose probability whose likely should who should be more e1 or omega e2 and omega omega so omega will have the largest likelihood right when it is covering basically and that value i want to normalize i don't want it to be take any value and that is why i will put a normalization i say that that value should be equals to 1 and last point i will assume that finite additivity we say that if you are going to take two mutually exclusive events if i look into the union so union of two events is going to be another e event the probability of that event should nothing but should be equals to the sum of the two events so for example like let's take i have this omega and i have this two mutually exclusive event here i am denoted as e1 and e2 then the likelihood of happening either of this that either of this is e1 union e2 right that is either of this should be nothing but then the probability the, then the, the likelihood of this should add up because they are just separate and uh, and that is what we call it mutually exclusive and if they are mutually exclusive then the probability of their union should be equals to some of their probabilities.